Okay, and with that, one side is done. The back slides in these dados and will be uh, shouldered and right along this. The front doors will close into these rabbits. The dividers will go into these dados. And as we said at the beginning, the, uh, the dados in the back are at different heights. So we've got the back slides into the deepest one and well the back uh, groove tongue slides into this groove and then the rest of the back panel will, will ride here. The uh, drawer dividers will slip into these. Okay. That I uh, approach the dovetails is to work on the tails first and then cut the pins. With through dovetails they're, they're really fairly easy to do. So I uh, begin by just taking a marking gauge. I like these knifed marking gauges rather than a pin marking gauge for this. Pins work great for mortise and tenon layout, but uh, especially into softer wood like pine or poplar, a knife gauge works well. So set that knife gauge to be the thickness of your uh, side stock. And if you want to make it just slightly thicker, um, go ahead and do that, then your pin will just extend out, or excuse me, your tail will just extend over a little bit, and it's real easy to clean up with a hand plane. Then uh, take, the, take the marking gauge and scribe uh, the bottom and top. Scribe around all sides. Go ahead and do the top as well. Just cut such a nice line. Make it fairly deep. I don't care if that's left, in, left behind. In fact, in some cases that's a preferred thing to do. Down the sides. Now when you use these, if you've never used a marking gauge before, I guess it's kind of intuitive, but uh, just keep the keep this fence tight against the stock, so you're kind of pushing in as you're pulling towards yourself or pushing away. Pretty easy to do. If you don't push, keep that fence tight. Push in, then you know the line can get curvy, which defeats the purpose. Okay. Now, take the uh, top or bottom, doesn't matter which one you work on first, and equally divide off uh, the number of tails that you want. In this case, I put five. I think the drawings show four, but you could put more or less. This basically what's going to happen here is I'm going to get a tail that looks like, like this, right? And then this, this area here will be cut away, and this area between the tails will be cut away. If you want to make a really thin uh, gap between the tails and make it, uh, you know, I guess in some circles, look nicer, just you can adjust, you can decrease this distance between them. You can play with the layout all you want is really what I'm trying to say. This is just the way that I like the look of, and uh, so I'll go with it. If you aren't, you know, generally I'll, I'll put a straight line, i use a square and, and put a straight line across. Um, and then I'll just saw freehand. So I'll, I'll saw down to this angle freehand and that angle freehand. And there'll be some variation from tail to tail, but that, to me that looks hand done. Um, not everybody likes that though, so if you want to use a, uh, a marking gauge or a, a dovetail gauge, you can do that. Um, in any case, the thing that you want to remember as you're sawing these is this angle isn't so critical, but staying parallel to this line on top is. If this line is, is tilted one way or another, it gets hard to match up the, uh, the pin in the case side. So make sure to keep your saw straight as you start the cut, parallel to this line, and then as you angle down, don't change the angle. Just, you know, let's say that you're your saw comes down here instead of here. That's okay. I'd rather have that than to see you try to curve the saw on the way down. That also gets hard to take care of later. So just uh, saw cut parallel to this and then straight at in almost any angle. So I'll go ahead and cut a few and you can watch it.
you want to stop these uh, saw cuts at your scribe line on the front and back. Uh, next, flip this thing around. Tilt this down a little bit. Cut off the top. repeat the same process on the other side and then uh, we'll come back and uh, waste away the material in between the tails. Removing the waste between the tails, uh, there's a number of ways to do it. You could take a coping saw down in here and try to cut this across. You can go to a band saw and try to cut this across uh, or you can just take a bench chisel and uh, if you do, and that's what I'm going to do today, if you do use a bench chisel, I recommend that you, you've got this scribe line and your chisel will register very nicely in there to get you a nice clean cut, but start uh, removing the majority of the waste away from that line. So I'm going to start probably a good eighth of an inch up and just get a couple of wax there. Usually they'll just pop out, especially in fun. Flip this over and come out the other side as well. There we go. So now they start popping off. Now, about the worst thing that can happen is occasionally you'll you're whacking this thing with a mallet is that you'll actually blow this entire this entire little piece right out the bottom and sometimes remove some of the bottom so there is a limit to how hard you can smash this thing and get away with it but you'll you'll get a feel for it as you do a few of these Sometimes getting these wedged pieces out of here is the hardest part. <laughs> 